Hello all of my crime history buffs over there. Today Truth Detective is over here and I'm going to review you a book. Public Enemies. You know, this book is a very interesting book about the crime history of United States in the 1920s and in the 1930s. And it reads over, over here, the bird of FBI. So it's also about the law enforcement side of things. And the book is mainly about these figures, John Dillinger, Machine Gun Kelly, Pony and Clyde, Babyface Nelson, Pretty Boy Floyd and the Barkers. And I would say that this book is mainly about John Dillinger. The story that this book starts is about Bonnie and Clyde. And Bonnie and Clyde, there were a couple of bank robbers and robbers in general. They actually robbed more, you know, pharmacies and that kind of stuff. And they, their loots were smaller, you know, in one heist that for, than, for example, for example, with John Dillinger, you know. Because John Dillinger usually from like bank heist, he, he made something like, his gang, I mean, made something like $30,000 in one go. And that was a lot of money back then. So this book is mainly about John Dillinger. And John Dillinger, you know, he was kind of a, a famous personality, you would say. He became kind of fame through this. And... Uh, it talks about the crazy operations like the plastic surgery operations that these criminals went through, for example, to get rid of their fingerprints. Like, I read that and I was like, man, like, what the fuck? Why didn't they use gloves? <laughs> Maybe they didn't have gloves, who fucking knows? But. I was, uh, like that that part of this book was kind of like holy shit like that's pretty that's pretty hardcore but but really but really it was a very hard time in the history of America it was the time of the depression and uh, these guys weren't part of the mafia you know John Dillinger wasn't the mafioso you know he was a he was a bank robber criminal and that's kind of different because usually the mafia didn't do these kind of operations it wouldn't have you know been able to tr thrive because these guys were usually kind of smaller groups and they weren't so net networked maybe as the mafia was and uh, the, it talks about it talks about all the getaways you know that they did and how they did those and uh, and uh, uh, illegal doctors that helped them when they got shot or wounded and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also a picture of J. Edgar Hoover over here with a fedora hat on, on his head. And John Dillinger, John Dillinger at least wore fedora hats during the bank heists. And some, sometimes uh, uh, he also, also, when he went to the plastic surgery, you know, he... He, he went through it and he was kind of unrecognizable. But there happened a scene where Dillinger actually died and he, you know, he didn't get caught. He died by the police sh shooting him. And it happened like this, that he went to see a movie actually. And uh, he kind of, I, I believe that he did it this on purpose because he hinted that he wanted to die before uh, that happened already in this book. And... He went to see a movie with some lady, lady friend he had and he, he got shot after coming out of the movie by the police and he, he was killed by the police, you know, or the FBI. I, I, don't, rem I don't remember how, how it was. It talks, it talks about the detectives and why, pe why people got, into the, uh, got working for the FBI and the danger they put themselves in this business. And I believe that John Dillinger and was it was it uh, Pretty Boy Floyd uh, were actually were actually in the same in the same bank robber gang at some point also. And yeah, it was it was a great it was a crazy time, you know. Uh, a lot of Tommy guns and a lot of you know fedor hats and suits and classical jackets and uh, detectives in this book. So if you like that kind of stuff. 
uh, read it for sure, but I'm going to tell about this writer style that some of the action scenes with Dillinger were really well written and some of the, some of this stuff was like pretty kind of info dumping, you know? And then uh, this is about 500 pages, this book, or what? It, what is it, like 550 pages. So it's also quite a, quite a lengthy book at the same time. Uh, and I would say that this is not very a true history of, of this. This is mainly a book about Dillinger, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, he was probably a very important figure in this kind of timeline because uh, you kind of have to think that are the bankers really on our side either way. And uh, it was it was pretty funny funny that uh, Ding Dillinger was actually hailed as you know kind of a good guy and a public figure in that 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 time, and it kind it kind of makes it kind of makes you think of how the the monetary system kind of evolved. I don't remember if the U.S. dollar was still on the gold standard at this point, but nowadays it's not. You know, uh, U.S. dollar is a fiat currency, it's no longer uh, related to the value of gold in any way. And I believe, I believe that the most of the, you know, there were, there were no internet, there was no computers, you know, all money was in cash and gold bars, diamonds, that kind of stuff, you know, every, everything was kind of physical. So in that time, you know, these guys, you know, they thrived, but, at the, at, but also he says in the book that crime doesn't pay. And of course, crime doesn't pay in the sense that his life was kind of limited at the same time. And in the end, he got pretty careless about his, uh, you know, he uh, he uh, kind of tried to live his life on top of being a fucking bank robber. And that usually that won't fucking work. So, yeah, thanks for watching this video. Public enemies.